Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at Black Flags, Blue Waters, The Epic History of America's Most Notorious Pirates by Eric J. Dolan. I'm a big fan of Eric J. Dolan. This is the third book of his that I've read and I think he does a really good job with uh, writing history and relaying it back to the reader. Okay, now this book is giving us an overview of pirates that are famous in the Atlantic coast, down the Caribbean, and into the Indian Ocean. And these are uh, pirates of the English persuasion. <clears throat> and these are the ones that tend to fascinate us the most here in the United States. And let's, let's just look at other books by Eric J. Dolan. There's some really good stuff here. Leviathan, The History of Whaling in America. I highly recommend that. I'm going to do a re review of that eventually. I consider that to be Dolan's magnum opus of what I've read, the three that I've read. It's one of the best history books I've ever read. But let's get on with Black Flags, Blue Waters. You've got to have good pen and ink drawings in a pirate book. It makes it more piratey somehow. I'm not sure why, it just does. This book came out in 2018, at least this version of it. Here's the uh, ISBN down here if you want to look at that. But this is a well-known book by a well-known historian, so you'll be able to find it easily. We start with a quote from William Shakespeare. Ships are but boards, sailors but men. There be land rats and water rats, water thieves and land thieves. I mean pirates. All right, now here's where we get to the meat of it. Here, here's the table of contents. You can see basically what he's covering here, some big concepts. And within those big concepts, he talks about individual pirates. And he has a note here about the spellings of things. There, the spellings of certain words in English just weren't standardized in the time that we have uh, source documents covering the pirates. And so we have to do a bit of editorial uh, decision making. And what Dolan does is we just modernize the spellings just to add to comprehension. That's great. Don't have a problem with that at all. Okay. Every good pirate book has got to have at least one map, right? So here we have <clears throat> the Atlantic coast of North America from Maine down to Florida. And we have centered in on Boston Massachusetts here, and the southwestern coast of Maine. And then we've got the Indian Ocean. This figures in large to some pirates. That's good to know. And then, of course, we've got to have a map of the Caribbean and the Spanish Maine. If you've ever played the video game Sid Meier's Pirates, which has been in various um, uh, formats across the years, back to the 80s, from being a PC game into a Nintendo game, and I think it was on the Nintendo Wii. I don't know if it's been updated since the Nintendo Wii. Perhaps it has. If you've ever played that game, it teaches you the geography of the Caribbean. You have to learn it in order to be successful in that game. Just a little side aside there. And he's got a good introduction here. And here he has um, Blackbeard fighting Lieutenant Robert Maynard. That's a very famous encounter. If you're from the Carolinas, you might know about that already as part of just local history. But this is a big deal in uh, pirate history. And he has a good introduction. And he's got good illustrations throughout the book. Now, one thing I have to tell you is this is not the first pirate book I've ever read. This is an introduction, of course, to all these pirates mentioned in this book, like Dixie Bull and uh, Thomas Pound, Thomas II, Henry Every, and of course I mentioned Blackbeard. Now here's the thing about, um, about this book. I've already read a book like this before, and I can tell this is not Dolan's best work. Now it's still worth reading, but no offense to Eric J. Dolan, I really appreciate all that he does. This is not his best work. I would consider uh, a previous book 
by author Edward Rowe Snow called Pirates and Buccaneers of the Atlantic Coast. This is the first pirate book I ever read. And it does the same kind of thing that Black Flag's Blue Waters does. But I think Snow has the edge over Dolan on this one. I think Snow does it better. Edward Rowe Snow was from Massachusetts and loved local history. Absolutely loved it. He knows about all these huge uh, disasters that took place, the great fire that took place in like Salem, Massachusetts in the late 1800s, I believe, early 1900s. He knows about shipwrecks, storms, horrific hurricanes that hit the uh, New England area. And he just couldn't get enough of that kind of thing. He's also a treasure hunter, looked for the lost pirate ship, the Widda, which crashed off of um, and sank. I guess it ran aground and sank in a storm off of Cape Cod. He searched for that, found some things from it, lived long enough to see someone else <laughs> find uh, more. And I think Edward Rowe Snow looms large in uh, New England history. And I think he has the edge on Eric J. Dolan, unfortunately for, for Dolan. But I'm still recommending this book to read it. It's nice to have another author's perspective of the same stories that we had from... Uh, from snow, the same kinds of things. We're talking about the same pirates like Quelch and Blackbeard and Kid. And the thing about Kid is um, the same question that I've raised before. Was Kid a privateer or was he a pirate? And I think that's a very important question to ask. All right, so I'm going to close this review out. It's been over six minutes. Um, I think that's probably long enough for all you can stand of, of me going on and on. But I want to tell you that uh, I recommend this book. And just consider that Dolan left out some of the more fantastical details about pirates. And it is difficult to sort out fact from fiction with the historical record about uh, these characters. People used to write... Um, small, short narratives about them as far back as the early 1700s, not long after the golden era of piracy ended. And it's very difficult to untangle the fiction from the fact. Snow doesn't bother to do that. He gives you the legend and the, the facts as he knows them and lets the reader decide what they're going to swallow as a pill. And Dolan... <clears throat> sees his responsibility as, I have to do that for the reader and just give you the facts as I know them, as I've determined them to be. And that's why I think it's important to pair Dolan's book with Snow's book. All right, that's it for now. I hope everybody has an awesome day.